Hello everyone. So this time I'm going to speak to you one-on-one -on -one with no script. Um, obviously that's been part of my journey is, you know, getting off the crutch of a script and being able to just speak. That's the stage of rhetoric. And I've been working on the stage before that, you know, just logic and understanding. So it's like, you can't really have good rhetoric until you have the understanding and you know what to communicate because it's, um, it's part of your worldview. You know, you're no longer like, in that dialectic of trying to figure things out. You know, when you're in the dialectic, in terms of the Socr Socratic di dialectic, not the Hegelian dialectic of control, but where you're in the process of inquiry philosophically, which is what everyone needs to do to arrive to truth, then it's, um, it's, it's gonna be more difficult for you to, to be a good communicator, right? So that's kind of like the stage I've been in. But I wanted to, you know, first of all, let everyone know that I did remove my MGTOW videos and my videos on gender. Because I know some people might be maybe trying to find those videos or interested in why I did that. And I just wanted to explain why, especially to the certain people that are interested in the work that I'm doing. And my reason is that those videos are imbalanced. And I was actually getting out of a very heavy mind virus, a very heavy misogynist mind virus. And so I was working my way out of that. And the videos were part of that process of healing. And then when I healed, gender was no longer a topic that I needed to explore, you know, but it definitely took me a long time to, you know, to heal from that one and to understand some basic truths about it, um, which I know that other people can have that problem too in, um, in coming to certain truths because of your own psychological baggage. Um, I mean, you are the one that puts your own blocks to truth. And all of those blocks are, in a sense, preventing you from awakening to your true sovereignty. Because when you accept true sovereignty, you're accepting 100% responsibility. And you're accepting that you are a completely free agent in terms of being, in terms of free will. Like your free will agency is absolute. It's not that, oh, you have 60% free will and you have 40% um, conditions. It's like, no, you are entirely a free agent. And everything in your psychology wants to work against understanding that knowledge because accepting full responsibility is a very difficult thing to do. We want to have excuses. We want to have scapegoats. We want to like blame things on this, um, which ultimately make us powerless to change. And because they're based in falsity, they're, you're removing your sovereignty. And so that is an, a very unhealthy route to go. And being in the MGTOW movement, not that I ever was because I'm a female, but that is the trap of the MGTOW movement is to blame the issues of the gender on nature and to say that female nature is the source of our problems. Now, I always took a more of a, I tried to be balanced with that and not balanced in a holistic way, but balanced in a false way in terms of saying that it's both nature and nurture and saying that it's 50, like 50% 50 nature and 50% um, conditioning, or maybe it's 80% conditioning and 20% nature. I mean, I was kind of more skewed that way because I understand how much the conditioning of women's minds today is a big um, you know, cause for all of the trouble in relationships and divorces and um, the custody issues. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's obviously a problem, and that's why the MGTOW movement has, has so much uh, energy in it. But, the, but even if you say that, that nature contributes 2% and that social conditioning contributes 98%, like you are still allowing a 2% scapegoat. And that does not understand sovereignty. And this is why sovereignty has to be grounded in the absolute, in the absolute totality, 
to where there is no percentages. You are absolutely 100% sovereign. And it's until people start to realize that, will the conditions of society change? Will women wake up, you know, to the fact that no, like just, and just because society is training your minds to do this, you are still sovereign. You are sovereign no matter what. And the only way to change is to take 100% responsibility. So I just want to say that, yeah, I'm a little embarrassed because I feel like I was not willing to take responsibility for the female shadow because I definitely just went so in depth with the female shadow um, because I'm into psychology, I'm into consciousness, I'm into truth. So that's something I'm definitely not going to ignore. But I obviously overindulged in that and I felt... And I, and I went into a very self-loathing and self-defeatist defeatist place because I felt like maybe it was my nature to be like that. And that's a very, very dark and poisonous worldview to have. Like if you're going to be a, men having that perspective on women, that it's their nature, or even just a woman having that perspective on yourself, that ultimately stems from a poisonous, self-loathing worldview that can only lead to suicide, that can only lead to death, that can only lead to the to horrific destruction because it's opposed to truth. It's opposed to natural law. And your sovereignty is connected with love and is connected with freedom, is connected with truth. And when you start to get into that, then you start to be a co-creator with natural law, in alignment to natural law, as a participant in the good because you are completely awakened to the fact that your choices, your thoughts, your feelings are unique, are all of your making and so you have to get that right you have to desire to align those elements of yourself and integrate those elements together in alignment to natural law to, to start to be an active co-creator in the beauty of evolution and evolution is a very beautiful thing and the miracles that can happen and the opportunities and the people that come into your life and just the feeling of, of love and bliss you know like that's that's the awesomeness of existence but you have to learn the difference between right and wrong. And that rests in your worldview and whether you have a true and false worldview. In a false worldview, you're going to unconsciously do wrong things. Like you could be, because you know, wrong correlates to falsity. You know, so these are holistic ways of understanding these principles. Also, I want to say that in me coming to recognize uh, what sovereignty is at a deeper level because this learning of philosophy and a, of natural law education is a continuous um, learning. You can always go deeper and you're always going deeper in yourself to understanding that. And I feel like I've had this kind of new understanding of my own sovereignty. And, and when I do, I actually feel alive, you know, because you're not alive when you're allowing all these external forces to manipulate you you know but you are alive when you fully activate care when you fully activate will and when you when you gain the knowledge the knowledge that you need of metaphysics and of you know the objective difference between right and wrong and so recognizing that it's not nature that you know human nature is the law of mind you know the law of mind is an incredibly important principle to understand because mind is is the you know the beginning the start of, of of creation of anything you know like our biological bodies are a manifestation of our mind and so i am completely opposed to genetic determinism to i'm completely opposed to biological determinism to just genetics the idea of like that passing genes, you know, has some kind of like intrinsic, you know, value to it, you know, because it all comes down to consciousness. And so I feel like I've kind of had this awakening and understanding the law of mind and the primacy of consciousness and how consciousness is, you know, prior to matter. And that when you start to understand that, um, then there is no need to consider nature being an element. And when nature is no longer an element, then you are completely control of what you're creating, you know, and that actually, that is the most empowering um, worldview to have is to know that there's nothing deterministic about your consciousness. And it's only the worldview 
that we are deterministic machines, that we are deterministic beings, that causes us to live in that ignorance of self-fulfilling realities, self-loathing realities that cause incredible pain and suffering because we are not in alignment to natural law. So anyways, I just wanted to share you these thoughts and explain that I will be putting a lot more content about the gender issues, but I wanted to come from a balanced place. And so I needed to go through, you know, certain lessons with those MGTOW videos. But um, now that those lessons have been learned, I just want to share the knowledge that I've learned now, you know, and not really be kind of lost in that whole um, topic. And it was a very confusing topic for me due to my own uh, psychological issues because now that I see the truth and I'm just kind of like duh you know like where was I like, like but at the same time understanding the law of mind the law of consciousness is complete reversal to all of our indoctrination you know so this shift of understanding is not an easy shift it's a huge fucking shift and um you know, I just hoped that my shift in that in my consciousness, you know, on this, which will be pretty evident in the work that I do from here on out, um, will be perceptible to people and will, um, you know, have somewhat of an impact on, on society. So, so as a philosopher, it's not only that we, as philosophers, are finding errors in cognitive thinking, um, illogical arguments, fallacies. It's that we are also seeking the heirs of sovereignty. You know, we're seeking of the, the blame, the justification, the rationalization of excluding one's 100% responsibility. And so, you know, as philosophers, yeah, that's another thing we're detecting. We're detecting, you know, anything that diminishes the absoluteness of sovereignty. And on that note, I'd like to say that on the, on the uh, notion that human nature is programmable, programmable, I would like to disagree and say that human nature is sovereign and that programmability is merely the effect of human beings not being aware of their sovereignty, of being in ignorance, of having false worldviews. So programmability is, is the result of ignorance. In other words, it's not the result of nature because human nature is sovereignty. So sovereignty is truth. That's the truth of your nature. Like you are consciousness. And so I, on that note, it's important to recommend Mark Passio's videos on this topic of MGTOW gender, um, the, the female uh, shadow, and you could check out his unholy uh, feminine, the unholy feminine seminar going into depth about the social engineering. So yes, there's the social engineering that are programming ignorant, unaware women. And the only way out of that is for women to become aware <laughs> of their actions, you know, and, and that their actions are objective and that they're right or wrong. Um, you know, objective morality. And so it all lies in the sovereignty of women. That's what the solution is. And it's not an easy solution, you know, people waking up. But if people are waking up on the problem, you know, that's half of the work. It's like, and then you got to wake up to, you know, how to become a sovereign person, how to be, how to become psychologically healed, how to align yourself to natural law. And just understanding the three elements of care, will, and knowledge can help you in that. You know, they're, it's very basic, but just, you know, understanding what will is, is a huge, um, is a huge breakthrough because it's opposed to the system of programma, programmable nature. It's opposed to the, the system of social conditioning, you know, to think that our will is free and has this immense power, you know, to just to, to stop doing wrong actions and start doing right actions. So, you know, that, that's going to be the start. And, you know, but sovereignty is the taboo, you know, don't let people, you know, we don't want people to know that they're sovereign so that we can control them. So.
And I'm not going to go into this today, but you know, what are some people are asking? Well, what are some spe specifics of what women women are doing wrong? And that is that they are using men as resources. They're choosing to be with men for money. You know, they're choosing to be with men, you know, so that they can take care of them, so they can they can be a daddy figure, you know, for all the wrong reasons, but generally materialistic reasons. And that's why you know the law of mind opposes the materialistic paradigm. You know, because the materialistic paradigm is all about fear, all about security, all about about clinging on to, you know, the transient world of matter, you know, as the gold, when the gold is consciousness, but it's invisible. So, you know, people don't want to place value on something that's invisible. But we're talking about the most amazing, invisible feature of existence, consciousness. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up now in... Uh, just say thank you for my viewers uh, for supporting me and that there will be a lot more content to come and I really appreciate it and feel a lot of love for you guys and um, I, I don't like how my one and ones are <sighs> like pauses and rambling and ums and I knows blah 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 I like to have a polished piece for you but every once in a while I need to to do it this way so you guys can really see my, where my rhetoric as, is at and I can see where my rhetoric is really at and because it's just a muscle to practice and you just got to keep practicing it and I feel like I've been getting in a lot of natural law conversations with people in person now and so I have the confidence to do this and kind of look a little bit foolish and not being as polished as I want to be but that's okay I'm going to give you both you're going to get the unpolished um, Janet ESP and the polished and you know some of you will like one and some of you like the other all right I'm getting too analytical about this anyways um, I love you guys and stay tuned for more hi everyone Sane Man here this video is brought to you by a donation from Mr. T and here's what he has to say fool Hello Sandman, oops, I upset my sister. My sister said she liked the movie Loving Pablo, so I decided to watch it. I was expecting a story of the most successful drug lord, but instead, it was a story about a gold digger. I write to my sister telling her that the woman in Pablo is an excellent example of hypergamy. My sister responds by saying that she's a gold digger. I got intellectual and responded by saying that if I were actually cynical, I would say that what differentiates women is only the level of hypergamy they employ individually. My sister said that's complete bullshit. She's a woman that is involved with a married man. I told her that amongst animals, a female is willing to share a male if he has the resources. Alpha males even have several females, whereas beta males have nothing. When I said this, my sister called me bitter and sick and said that I should study bad male behavior. I asked her why would I be bitter. I already understand male behavior, therefore, I don't need to study them. My thinking is that when you actually have no argument in front of science, you just say that people are sick. My sister then asked me why do I generalize. I responded by saying that in life, there are people who can and people who can't. It's just a matter of options. This is why the most beautiful women in the world are not with the most beautiful men, but the ones with the most resources and social status. Same man, I'm obsessed because I see the truth of female nature everywhere. Do I talk about it too much because I can't not react when it work? People often talk about the wage gap, or they ask me to basically be a mentor for he for she. Well, Mr. T, thanks for your donation and for sharing your story. You're right to see the truth, and it sure is ugly. Most women are ugly on the inside because of female nature from a male perspective. That's why I believe that women work so hard to increase their outer beauty with makeup and clothing to cover their inner flaws. Pay no attention to the hermaphrodite midget standing behind the velvet curtain with loose meat curtains. Instead, pay attention to the shallow image I present to hide the person you would never accept. The problem is we live in a politically correct society, so you're not really allowed to bring things up that you see as being part of the ugly truth. As a man going your own way, it's probably insanely difficult not to respond when people say things about the wage gap or women insult or shame us men in general. If you stand up for yourself, you don't actually look like you're standing up for your opinions to others. Instead, you look like you're being mean to women. You see all that ugly female behavior all around you, but at the same time, you can't call it out for what it is. Because either you get shamed by women or they escalate your actions up to the higher ups if you're in a work environment, and because of that, you aren't allowed to express yourself. With each passing day of being red pilled and not being able to act out on the truth that you see all around you, it means that you're becoming more bitter and spiteful. So she's right when she says that you're becoming bitter, but she doesn't really understand why. She probably thinks that some individual woman out there hurt you, and now you hate all the women in the world. She has mistaken women making you bitter for the understanding of female nature that actually makes you bitter. The two are completely different, but women see them as the same thing, it seems. It's tough when you see ugliness in female nature, but you can't do anything or say anything about it.
Okay, this is kind of like an extra tidbit. Obviously, I just I took off my makeup. I, I had my makeup on before I even had the idea to do, to do this video because it's a hobby of mine. And um, but I I thought I could act, actually integrate it into the video, which be which could be a little bit funny. And um, if there's any people that watch my videos that also put on makeup. I don't know. Uh, I just want to let you know that I found this great Amazon deal <laughs> for $10. And uh, this is a $45 palette if you get the what it's copying, which is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Prism Palette. So anyways, um, there is a point of me showing you makeup right now. And I don't know if you can see, but looks like you can't really see the names that well. But anyways, I'm just going to tell you. So the name of this eyeshadow is Famous. The name of this eyeshadow is Runaway. The name of this eyeshadow is Heartless. And you don't even need to see the shadows, I don't think. But, um, and then they have an eyeshadow name, Run This Town, one called Rehab, one called Trust Issues. So, you know, it's just like, it's just like our culture wants to pathologize women to the nth degree. You know, it's just like, it's, it's really sick. It's really sickening. So I'm actually going to black out the names of these eyeshadows because I do know that words have vibrations and I got a good deal, but that's just sick and twisted names for makeup. Like what the fuck? 